Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbaugh. W. Somerset Maugham was an English writer in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And this guy was popular, you know, churning out short stories for big bucks, you know, the kind of career that doesn't really exist for writers these days. Anyway, he spent some time traveling in Malaysia back when it was under the British Empire, and this is the jumping off point for Tan Tuan Ang's novel, The House of Doors. And while it takes place in the rich and diverse island of Penang, Tan Tuan Ang focuses mostly on the point of view of the British characters. There's a part in this interview where NPR's R. Shapiro asks him about it, and, well, you know how there's always these debates about whose story gets told and how certain identities are centered? I think he gives one of the most succinct and clear answers on the issue that I've heard in a while. This message comes from Apple Card. Reboot your credit card with Apple Card. It gives you unlimited daily cash back that you can now choose to grow in a high-yield savings account that's built right into the Wallet app. Apply for Apple Card now in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility requirements. Savings accounts provided by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. The author Tan Tuan Ang writes historical fiction set in Malaysia, the country where he was raised. His newest novel, The House of Doors, revolves around a famous British author who spent time traveling in the region. The short story writer W. Somerset Maugham, known to his friends as Willie, The House of Doors has already made the long list for this year's Booker Prize, and Tan Tuan Ang is here to talk with us about it. Welcome to All Things Considered. Hello there. It's very good to be here uh, to talk to you all. This is the second novel that you have set on the island of Penang off the west coast of Malaysia, and you live there part-time. For people who've never been there, give us a sense of what it's like to walk through the streets of Georgetown, Penang's main city. It really feels like you're walking uh, in Penang 100 years ago. Hmm. Uh, The old shop houses are there. They've got the original names of the streets. A lot of the tradesmen and craftsmen are still uh, still working there, carrying on the the, the job that their uh, grandparents did. A lot of the food stalls, the street hawkers, they're still uh, continuing the traditions started by their grandparents. So there's a sense of timelessness when you walk in the streets of Penang. Uh, And the only way you can really absorb and appreciate Penang is to walk there. I always tell people, don't drive, don't take the bus, don't just just walk. And because Penang for centuries has been such a hub of international cross currents, as you walk through the town, it's like you see the influences of Thailand and India and China and Japan and the British Empire and, and on and on and on. Yes, it's uh, as as I mentioned in in my first novel, The Gift of Rain. You can cross worlds and and cultures just by crossing a street. You have know, got the little India quarter, and as you take the next street, you're coming to the Malay quarter, and then the Chinese. And uh, you know, it, it's it's so wonderful, and all of these cultures have mingled and, and merged, and they've created uh, a cuisine which is uniquely Penang as well. Uh, Peranakan food, uh, so many variations of that food, and I I think it's one of the most delicious foods in the world. It's the only place I've ever tried nutmeg as a fresh fruit or a juice. (laughs) (laughs) Refreshing. (laughs) So what makes Penang such a good vein for a fiction writer to tap, and specifically a writer of historical fiction? Well, because it's so rich with stories. You know, uh, if you walk down the the streets of the town, every house behind the doors, you you wonder what what are the stories there, Tales of, of uh, love and death and disappointment and fears and hopes. There's so many stories there. Every street has a wonderful story. Uh, it's, it's really a, a rich mine uh, for, for any author to, to write about Penang. Well, this story, The House of Doors, revolves around a few events that actually took place in the 1910s and 20s. The great Chinese revolutionary Sun Yat-sen visits Penang. So does the British writer W. Somerset Maugham. And in another part of Malaysia, a married woman is on trial for killing her lover, which I take it was a case that captured the world's attention. So what did these events have in common that you thought could make them work together in one novel? The one thing they had in common was that these events are slowly being forgotten by um, readers today, Hmm. especially the younger readers. Uh, For for instance, the the murder trial of Ethel Proudlock in Kuala Lumpur, which had taken place almost 100 years ago. Almost nobody today knows much about it. And I first, even I, I first came to know about it through um, the letter, Somerset Maugham's short story. Which was, he wrote a short story about that trial. 
Yes, he based a short story called The Letter on um, the Trial of Ethel Proudlock. I read the story in my teens and I found it very compelling. But I was even more uh, uh, interested when I found out that he had based it on this real-life trial, in, which had happened in the town I, I, I was growing up in. History is alive in Penang. It's, it's not dusty and, and dry. You know, it, it's, it's living. All you have to do is just look for it. I, I think any time a novelist writes a character who's a fiction writer, readers are going to wonder about parallels. Yes. And uh, W. Somerset Mom, who's known as Willie, does not come off very well in this book. <laughs> do you see similarities between yourself and him? <laughs> I, think so. I think he comes up quite... Uh, I try to make him human. Yeah. Uh, I try to make him have a lot of weaknesses and flaws. Uh, and a lot of his problems as a writer I face as well. You know, the, the problems with finding inspiration, the problem with finding... Uh, time to write. Uh, but he solves those problems yes. by kind of betraying the confidences of the people around him who, who trust him and then he skewers them publicly in his stories. He does. Uh, and yet people, people are aware of this tendency of his. And yet they still feel inclined to uh, spill, the, spill their guts to him. You know, in one of his uh, nonfiction writings, he mentioned that after he wrote some of his short stories, a lot of people were very angry with him for, for writing about them and not even bothering to, to change their identities. But there were also a lot of people who were even more angry that he did not write about them. <laughs> the ones who were included were offended yes, and the ones who were, were not offended, yes. were offended they didn't make yes. the cut. I love it. Yes. <laughs> That must make it easier to write about events that happened more than a century ago. You don't have to worry about offending the people you're writing about. I'm quite careful about offending their uh, uh, descendants. Really? Well, in a, in a way, you know, I, I don't want to make people unhappy or, or create a lot of misunderstandings. You know, I want to present the character as, as authentic and accurate. So I don't go out of the way to just highlight the, the negative parts. But I also try to, to create a fair, fair uh, representation of the character. And, Have you ever uh, heard from the descendants of the people you've uh, written about? I, yeah, you, you read my mind. Because a few weeks ago, I had an email from a lady in England. And she wrote and said, my name is Siri. And I'm the great granddaughter of Somerset Moore. No. And I'm writing on behalf of my mother as well, Camilla, who is the, uh, the granddaughter. And they thank me for they 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 really enjoyed the book and they enjoyed my depiction of uh, Somerset Maugham because oh. it brought back a lot of good memories for them, uh, especially for Camilla, the the granddaughter who used to spend her summers in uh, Somerset Maugham's villa in the south of France, and and they said that he was such a doting and loving and kind grandfather, hmm. despite the public uh, perception of him as as sour and grumpy and irritable. You wow. Know? <laughs> But they love it, and they thank me for for bringing back Somerset Maugham to the reader's uh, awareness again. So it was a what very a treasure. Mo- yes, it is a very moving email, a uh, very revealing, uh, very open, and very frank. And I was very moved by it when when I finished reading the email. We've talked about what a rich place Penang is, where so many different cultures intermingle, and this story is mostly told from the perspective of. The Brits, the British people who live there. What do you think we see by looking at the world through that particular lens? Well, we see how they felt that they were morally superior to the people they were ruling over during that time. And that was the, one of the weapons they used to justify their power. Because we are, we are, we are morally superior, we are much uh, advanced technologically. That's one of the reasons why when the Ethel Proudlock case happened, so many British people were, were upset by that trial because Ethel Proudlock showed that the white man and the white woman was not uh, morally superior. So she, she was involved in an affair and she shot her, her lover. And she was the first English woman to be charged with murder in, in Malaya. And that trial showed everyone that the rulers, the, the Brits, were not in any way superior to anyone. <laughs> Tan Tuan Ang, his new novel is The House of Doors. Thank you so much for talking with us about it. It's a pleasure chatting with you, Ari. This message comes from NPR sponsor, BetterHelp. This new year, what about new year, same you? Maybe you need a few improvements and not a complete overhaul. Therapy can help. Try BetterHelp. That's betterhelp.com slash NPR. The following message comes from NPR sponsor, MassMutual. 
The Mass Mutual Foundation empowers local nonprofits to increase financial resilience in their communities. Board member Dorothy Varon explains why building these partnerships is key. There's an interdependence between financial wherewithal, which the foundation can bring to bear, and leaning on partners who can be in the community, helping us identify solutions, helping us identify other partners to work with. Visit MassMutual.com foundation to learn more.